Welcome back to Ryan and Brian's Bible Bistro. I'm Ryan. Hey, and I'm Brian. And this is the Bible Bistro. The final episode of Bible Bistro season two. But come back for season three, because we got some really neat things planned. I don't want to give away some of the secret. There's going to be some changes and some exciting things happening in the dun, bistro dun, dun. so probably we'll we'll put out some announcements about exactly the date we'll be starting yes but, it uh, will be in january yeah not sure exactly when but Which we will year? be back maybe 2023 it will definitely be in a january sometime <laughs> No, it's going to be. It's, we're just taking a few weeks off to do some planning, which yes. is a little different. It's for a little us. different for us. We're going to do some planning, <laughs> thinking through, strategizing, yeah. and and I would say this is. If you are a listener and you have some questions or things yeah. that you'd like us to talk about or, you know, not guaranteed that we can talk about them. Right. Or, I mean, we may not know. You'll know. Or some, I won't some know. guests you'd like to see on. Or yeah, absolutely. You know, if you'd like to be on the Bistro. Oh, my gosh. We've never given a shout out. If you'd like to be on the Bistro. I don't, that could be, well, <laughs> that could be dangerous. <laughs> You've already got a wild card in me. Um, yeah, so fair anyway, point. but uh, yeah, let us know what you think. And we're, uh, we're planning ahead. And so we'll yeah. be excited for you to join us yeah. then. So good, good stuff coming up. So. Yeah. But before season three, yeah. we're going to wrap up season two today with Advent. End of Advent. Yeah. And, and what are so, we talking about we're today? We're going to talk about love. Today is the fourth week of Advent, or we're talking about the fourth week of Advent today. And so we're talking about love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the only thing I'll say about love is it's one of these words that everybody, we use it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and it kind of can get slippery. You know, whenever you use a word in, in a variety of different ways, it, it kind of, and we even sometimes play on that. And I was thinking one of my uh, favorite um, singers, songwriters is Tom Petty. And he has the song uh, where he says, you know, uh, she's a good girl. She loves horses. She loves her boyfriend too, right? Right. And we use love like that. Oh, I love this, this. The shrimp and grits, I love it, you know, and but yeah, that's a different love. And I love my mama, and I love my children, you know, and so we right. use we, it. We, and I love God, you know, and I love America, right? And all, <laughs> all these things. Well, it's, it's the Tom Petty reference too. Yes, she loves America, right? But we use love in a, in a variety exactly. of different ways, exactly. And and so here's the thing: theologically, it's important. It's a crucial word for Christianity, thinking about God's love for us. And and so we're going to talk about that biblically from some passages thinking about the way that we also are called to love one another. And so here's where it kind of becomes wishy-washy. Yeah, I know God loves me and, and I love everybody, you know, and you think, okay, what does that mean? When you mm -hmm. say you love every person in the world, how, how's that demonstrated? What, you know, and so that, that's kind of what I want to talk about today as we think about love. We're going to look at Isaiah as we've been doing so far. Right. But I want to start with a couple of New Testament passages that, these are, <laughs> I know this is going to kind of sound strange, but these are about Jesus' birth as well. And, and one of them is from hmm. Paul, Romans chapter 5, 6 through 8. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and tell our listeners, we're going to go through a lot of scripture today, which is a good thing in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But Romans chapter 5, uh, verses 6 and eight, six through 8, you, you know, go ahead and open the CSV. That's fine. And then uh, later in 1 John, we're going to look at a couple passages in 1 John because these really are crucial as we think about this concept of love. Um, so when I was thinking about this, what I recognize is one of our first experiences of love for most of us is is the love of our family, uh, right? You're born, uh, you're, you're um, given a safe space, hopefully. Uh, I, I say that trepidatiously because I was thinking about this even today I was reading about this this person who had horrible experiences of abuse when they were young and how that shaped them and affected them and, and thankfully they're they're working through that in I think a very healthy way but you know mo for most of us the positive experiences of love come from from our family of origin you know and we experience that and that's what helps us then be in a place where we can love and again sometimes that's not the case. But there's, you know, there's still hope for us in, in finding ways through that. Through that. Um, but here's the thing. When you think about the love that your family has for you, that was really expressed in concrete ways, even before you were able to reciprocate love. Hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? When you were powerless, yeah. then your your mother and your father and your, you, you know, the uncles and aunts, and pe grandparents, people around you were 
were expressing love to you in, in their care and, and in the th- concrete things, right? Right. They didn't just, you know, set you off in a corner someplace, say, oh, we love that child, you know. And mm-hmm. it was, it, there was a concrete way in which that love was expressed, right? Right. And we often talk about a mother's love and, 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 and it, it's, it's a different, uh, again, you say we use love in a different way. That's different than, you know, I love uh, chocolate covered cherries this time of year, <laughs> right? Or, right. I love this sweater you got for me. Right. Uh, it, it's a concrete way in which love is expressed to you. Now, here's the thing. I think when we start talking about God's love for us, I think sometimes, it, and you help, help me, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it can sometimes come across in a very abstract way. Oh, I know God loves me. Right. No, I, yeah. It, it, it's a knowledge kind of thing, but do we experience God's love or do we feel about God's love? I had a counselor once tell me, you know, that, that 12 inches from your head to your heart is is the, the problem sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know God loves me, but do I experience that love? Do I feel that love that God has for me? And, and how can I feel that? And so I guess that's the first thing I want to kind of think about is, is um, God ultimately showed his love to us, I would say in sending his son, which is what we are thinking about in this season, right? He was expressing to his people in the past, um, you know, I'm going to send this Messiah. Um, And, and, you know, later we understand it's talking about his son uh, that he's sending for us. And this is the concrete expression of of God's love, his care, his concern. Um, and, And so I think when we think about love in this way, it kind of can correct some wishy-washy or vague feelings that we, we sometimes associate with Christianity. And I think it has a practical, you know, you know you're always saying, well, so what? I, I, I am. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm always saying It's it. on your cue card. So what? It's, yes. Um, but I think, I, I think that this can help us kind of firm up some of those ideas about how love is used within Christianity. So that's what I want to talk about today. Okay. Um, you know, so, so I think it's you know crucial we think about the coming of the Son of God um, in into the world as a way that we see this expression of love, and it helps us understand what it means that we are redeemed people, and it helps us understand the way that we express love to others. Is the way I would say it. So, r- read Romans chapter five for me, if you would, verses six through eight. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely, for rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so here's this idea. And I know this sounds more Easter than it does Christmas. But but do you see that God shows or NIV says God demonstrates his love for us in this. This is is how God approves, I think, is what what the CSB says. Yeah, demonstrates, okay. Mm -hmm. That that this is what, this is how God... Uh, shows his love for us, and, and again, it's a concrete way, right? He right. sent his son, um, and, and, and his son was willing to die on our behalf, right? Um, and, and what do you notice about that? I, I like, I actually like the CSV. You, CSV is what you're reading there. CSB, yep. CSB, sorry. When, when it says um, uh, the, the very first part, while we were helpless. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, yeah, for right? while we were still helpless. Right. The, the, the NIV says, uh, while we were still powerless, same, same kind of thought, but it was kind of what I was talking about before. As a baby, um, we're helpless. Without. Exactly. We, we have no way that we can reciprocate. And, and, and in fact, we're not able on our own to do what's necessary for our lives. And, and that's the situation that God finds herself, uh, finds us in, I should say, and and responds to us in the gift of His Son. Uh, it it didn't it didn't strike me until just now, but it reminds me very much of the image we get in Ezekiel. It's in the teens. I can't remember what chapter exactly. I want to say fifteen, Ezekiel fifteen, where God is talking about the nation of Israel, and He's basically they, they kind of got haughty with themselves, and and He's kind of reminded them where they came from. And he says, when I found you, you were a baby that had been left out on its own to die, been exposed. And I came by and I said, do you live? Um, and, and, and that's the kind of you know, expression of love again. So, so God demonstrates his love, not when we could do anything for ourselves. In our powerlessness, God sent Christ. Um, he sent his son for us. That's the Christmas part of this, right? Yeah. And and uh, and he died for us in our in our ungodliness. Um, 
and and there's some, another part of this, and I don't know if I want to. Let's go ahead to, to the next next part of this, and in First John chapter four, uh, verses nine through ten. I'll go ahead and read this. This is the NIV. It says, "This is how God showed His love among us." So that's the same kind of thing, right? God demonstrates His love in this way. Mm-hmm. Here's how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. So it's a similar kind of idea, right? We're, mm-hmm. we're unable to, to do for ourselves. We're unable to live. And so he sends his son. That's the advent. He's promising this. And then finally he sends his son. That's what we're looking forward to. And then this is what it, verse 10 says. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That word is only used a few times um, in the New Testament. Maybe well, I'm not, I don't remember off the top of my head, so I'm not going to say. But, but he sent him as a atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, that's an interesting part of this Christmas story. And some people really want to get the Easter story you know, in Christmas. And I think it's an important part of it. But isn't it interesting that here, where John's talking about the sending. And, and again, John, John wasn't big on the Christmas story in his gospel, right? Right. But he isn't, what's important for him is the incarnation, uh, that, that God sent his son to take on flesh and to dwell in our midst. That's what he's he's big on. Here it, it says that he also became an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So I, I'm going to say that part of what I think John is saying, and, and in fact he says this elsewhere in his gospel, you know, Jesus says this in his gospel, that that we were in a state of death until Christ came and then we are made alive, Right. Uh, so the the gift, if you will, of, of Christmas is that we are transformed from death to life. But he calls it here an atoning sacrifice on our sins. And 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 here's why I wanted to talk about this um, and, and kind of think through this, because love, God's love for us, isn't a blind acceptance of where we are. Hmm. Okay. Now make sure you understand what I'm what I'm saying. I'm going to go back and say this again. His love for us was demonstrated before we could love him. This is, you know, John says it this way. This isn't love that we love him. It's that God loves us, <laughs> right? Right. It's not that God says, oh, look at those people love me. Well, I guess I'll love them back. It, it's that as He's Paul the would, initiator. As Paul would say, while we were powerless, then Christ died for the ungodly, right? Mm-hmm. In, our, in our unloveliness, we were loved by God in, in this very specific concrete way. So that's true, but he didn't say, well, but they're, aren't they great? That's the reason I love them is because they're great just like they are. What he says instead is what they need is an atoning sacrifice for their sins because they're not great. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yes. In fact, as Paul says, they're ungodly. These are ungodly people. Uh, and, and yet God loves us enough that he sent Jesus so that we didn't stay in that, in that situation. So. I guess let me stop here and ask you. So, I, I, and just because there's kind of lot, lots of thoughts going through my head, what does that speak to you? Then, what what kind of things? God's sending His Son Jesus. How does that demonstrate His love? Would you say, or what kind of what parts does that have to us? Uh, like sacrifice. Like, okay. it, yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, uh, I, I you know I sacrificial. I think it's a good word. Sac- sacrificial. E- it's, even his even his. Taking off, you know, we often say, "Oh, he left the glory and splendors of heaven." However, however you want to understand that, but but he took on flesh, which became a, a very painful experience, right? Mm-hmm. For us, not because he needed to, right, right, but he did that because we needed him to. So I would call that sacrificial. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's uh, it's yeah, it's not about him. Right. It, it, it's about. I, I mean, it's. I don't know. How, I don't know how to word des- describe. I, I don't know. When you have a child, and, and I think this, I'm just getting back to your side. I think you're right. Sacrificial is not a bad word. It, it, when you, when you have a child, you recognize it's not all about you, right? Right. Um, that there are things that are going to have to change <laughs> in, oh, yeah. in order to in order to meet their needs. And 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 again, this is where I think sometimes we get this this it kind of get a wishy washy idea of God's. Well, God loves me, but you know, he, he loves you. Jesus said this, if you as, a, as an evil father, right, give good gifts to your children. You know, if your child asks you for an egg, you don't give him a scorpion, is right. what he says, which is a weird thing to say. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, 
uh, if your child asks for a fish, you don't give him a snake, right? Right. You're like, well, okay, you probably don't. But but this this idea of if you if you that are evil, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your good father, right? Your 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 father in heaven, how much more does he give you? Specifically, he says the Holy Spirit, which as we've said before, the Holy Spirit transforms us and changes us. So so you know, it's sacrificial. Uh, it's provision. It's provision. I think he, you know, he l- makes us live. He gives us what we, what is necessary for life. Um, James would say every good and perfect thing we have comes from the Father of Lights, right? A- every good thing we have, our family, our, uh, you know, it's dependent upon Him. It, it depends upon Him for the blessings that we have. Uh, I, I mean, I, I guess we could go on. Is there any anything else that comes to your mind or? <laughs> pretty much covered. <laughs> I think you covered it there. <laughs> well, and and here's the thing. So here's what I want to go back to is, is we get this kind of thought in popular in, in culture today, I guess, is the la- for lack of a better term. I know culture is a very slippery term, too, <laughs> yes, even as I say it. But but we get this idea, well, God is love, so he loves me like I am. And, and, and I want to affirm that. Yeah, he, he, he loved you in your ungodliness, but he also loved you and recognized that part of what you need is an atoning sacrifice for your sins. Hmm. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that is a, an aspect of his love for us, is I'm going to give them what's necessary so that they can be transformed. So even as I said, the Holy Spirit, the transformative work of the Holy Spirit in us, I think is, is an aspect of that. So, you know, God's love isn't, you know, <laughs> when he, it, it when, is it is prior to our regenerate. He's loved us even when we have nothing to bring. Even but, though when we're not as we should be, and in that love, but get does give us Christ and the Holy Spirit to transform us out. And, of. and that's that's the other part of that love. It's a love that doesn't want to leave us where we are. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's that's the other the other part of this. Okay, so those are kind of the Old Testament things, and now. So we've been going through Isaiah, and we've been going through what basically the the lectionary, the universal lectionary says is is the the passage for the Sunday. So it's Isaiah chapter seven, which I had a hard time getting much out of this. For this. That's why we're doing some of these other things. But I do think there's an important word in here, and we're going to read verses ten through sixteen. And this is the Ahaz. We actually, if you want to really listen to a good treatment of this passage, look back last because the other thing we did this passage last year, yeah, uh, during Advent. That really good treatment of that. So go back and take a look at that. But was it during Advent or was it a different time? Oh, it was a different time we did Isaiah I think it was 7. A, yeah, we did a different time, Isaiah. It, it's in but, this season. In the magic in the magic of podcast, it will actually be in the comments when this is all done. Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yes. Ryan's got a lot going on this week. So yeah. here's what chapter 7, verses 10 through 16 says. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, As a sign of the Lord your God, let it be as deep as Sheol, as, as the... the um, you know, hell or as high as heaven. But Ahaz says, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah says, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the, the young woman, the virgin, is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And, and that name, Emmanuel, literally means God with us. That That's what that name means. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's that that promise of God being with his people. Uh, he shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. And we've talked before. There, again, there's a good historical thing if you want to talk about this. What I want to talk about is the family aspect of what Emmanuel means. It means God with us. So, so part of that concrete nature of the love of God is that he says, I want to be with my people. And, and in Jesus, God takes on flesh and lives in our midst. Um, it, it, it's, it's relationship. And, and, and here's the thing. Love, when I say love, we sometimes think about the love of God abstractly. Love is expressed in relationship, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's a part of the... If we talk about love in funny ways... Um, you mentioned the mini splendored thing, but you know we've got all these love songs. Uh, we've got all these these expressions, weird expressions that we use. But but love is expressed in relationship, uh, and, and so this is the way that God chooses 
to relate to us, uh, not that we could somehow climb up a mountain and find him, but he comes down and, and lives in our midst, uh, takes on flesh like one of us. And, and so we talk about, <laughs> and I think people misunderstand this thing. I've said this before all, all the time when they talk about the personal aspect, the personal relationship nature and, 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 uh, of our love of God and his love. For, specifically, we're still talking about his love for us. Um, but uh, it, it is personal in that it is not impersonal. Right, it it is a personal mm-hmm. relationship. We we he he took on flesh and we relate to him as a person. Okay, right. It's not impersonal. It's not some force, love force, or whatever. That's just I don't floating know. out there, right? right. right. Yeah. It's not like a love wand he smacks us with or something. I don't know, but it is it is you know a a, a love of one person for another, and and God demonstrates His love for us in sending His Son. Uh, to become Emmanuel, to become become God with us. So the second major point I want to make, so I, I'm talking about this idea of is God's love is a transformative love. It doesn't leave us where we are. It changes us so that we are a different kind of people than we were before. Mm-hmm. True in the Old Testament, it's true in the New Testament as well. Uh, when God talks about this love that he has for his, you know, when I t- talked about this in Ezekiel, wherever it is, 15, I think, uh, when he talks about this idea, I said, do you live? He, he's talking about you were transformed. I chose you and, and you became uh, the means by which my message was going to be taken to the entire world. Um, so it's a transformative kind of love. Okay. And, and here's the other thing I want to say is God's love for us has to do with identity. We talked about identity uh, again this earlier this season. Talked about First Peter and oh, yes. kind of the chosen exiles. What right. a strange mm-hmm. identity I said that is that we were chosen and yet we are exiles. exiles. Right. Yeah. So so here's the way that God's love for us I think has to do with who we are. Um, it, it, it's an interesting way to think a, about identity. Um, how, what are different ways? that we identify ourselves. We've talked about this before, I think even in that episode. Uh, what, our families, groups that we're okay. a part of. Right. Um, occupation, maybe. Occupation. Yeah. Where we live. Where we live. What we look like. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you right. know, I mean, I think there's... We are finding new ways all the time to, to identify, identify ourselves. ourselves. Yeah, and even... Not in good ways. That's well, that's what I was saying. One of the things that we, we have been reading about and we've been talking about a little bit is this idea that we can create an identity, right? By our own, we become the creator right. of who we are, right? Right. Uh, and, and and so that kind of moves out, you know. There's a lot to unpack with that. There is. And, and so here's what I want to say is God's love, I think, has to do with our identity. So when you talk about your family, you know, I am, um, you know, the child of my parents. Uh, I am my spouse's husband in, in my case, you know, I'm Josanne's husband, uh, you're Lauren's husband. It, you know, we're identifying ourselves by relationship and, mm-hmm. and it's a love kind of thing, right? I, I am the, the child of Dale and Loretta, you know, that's, that's my identity. I, in our last name, our, our, you know, family name carries with it some of that. It's about relationships, about love. And I want you to notice the number of times when we talk about God's love for us, it has this element of intimacy uh, to it, um, like Emmanuel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this this intimacy. And, and one of the passages, I'm going to pull out a really weird one, unless you're a Messiah fan, and I mean Messiah hand by Handel, not the other guy. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, Handel's Messiah, we sing. Unless you're familiar with that, this is, I'm pulling out kind of a really weird Old Testament passage, Zeph- Zephaniah. If you're a Handel person, you're going to start singing in just a minute. Um, but uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Why don't you read for us? This is the NIV, I think we yes. have. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jer- Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. We could could talk about this passage for a long time, but notice some things here. 
um, he talks about daughter Zion in that interesting and daughter Israel. So there's that idea of, of like family, right? Right. Like a daughter, like a daughter that needs cared for, like a daughter that I'm providing for everything that's necessary and I'm protecting, right. A protecting kind of love. I didn't mention earlier, providing, protecting, uh, you know, a transformative kind of love. Um, and then it has all this stuff about the Lord has taken away your punishment, uh, and and down at the very end of this, uh, in his love, he will no longer rebuke you. So he recognizes again <laughs> that we are deserving of uh, we, we've we've gone astray, right? Right. We 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 are deserving of um, you know uh, a different end. It reminds me a little bit. I almost included this. It reminds me a bit of the story in Hosea, um, not of Gomer. Uh, and, and Hosea so much, but of their children, or at least their child, um, who was given this name. You might remember there's two children uh, that is born to Gomer. Uh, one of them is probably Hosea's, the other may not be. And and one of them is named Lo Ruhamah, right? Mm-hmm. No mercy. Yes. And the other one is named Lo Ami, not my people. But then he says, but they will be Ruhamah. You know, I'm going to change your name, Ruhamah. I'm going to change your name to Ami. And, and that's kind of that that same image that they will be my people, right? I'm going to take away their shame. I'm going to take away their sin. And, and I'm going to once again have this relationship with them. And that's, that's the kind of thing I think we have here. Um, it, it relates a little bit to our talk about joy last week because you see this idea of joy, the hang, hands hanging hang. limp. Mm-hmm. It, it reminds you of what? Surrender. Okay, surrender. Well, I, I was thinking. I was thinking like we talked last week about the courage and the strength that God oh, gives yes. us. You remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to transform his people to be instead of like knee, knees knocking. Yes. Right. And so their ha- hang, hands hanging limp. He, he, you know, he's going to strengthen them. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. But here's what it says: The Lord your God is with you. Is Emmanuel. Right, mm-hmm. God is with you. That's what it says there. Lord, it, God, the Lord is, your God is with is you. with you. He is Emmanuel, right? The mighty warrior who saves you. And then these these two lines, He will take great delight in you. And that's kind of the again, God's love for us isn't abstract. I mean, to take delight. What, what images does that give you when you talk about him, him taking delight in us? How would you, how would you express that if you're thinking in human relationships? Uh, you know, like as a dad, like delight in my kids, you know, like exactly. smiling, watching them, you know, flourish and exactly. do what they love. And that's exactly right. There's there's a sense, and it's not. You know, you live in a great neighborhood, you know, and, and, and I've met some of the neighborhood children in this near this bistro. Right. And, yes. and, and they're they're good kids. Right. And you, you 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 like their families and all this kind of stuff. But you feel differently about your children than you do mm-hmm. the neighborhood ruffians. Right. Oh, no, yeah. They're <laughs> rough kids around here. Yes. And but you, yes, I do. But you give them saying you're going to take delight, de- take delight in them in a way. You might say, oh, I love these kids, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you wouldn't want to see any harm come to the, these right. kids. And you would if, if something happened and you could protect them, you would, would do, do it. You would do yeah. that. That's mm-hmm. that's a love you're expressing for them. But it's different with your kids, right? Mm-hmm. There's a delight there. There's a, there's a. I don't like to see their Christmas programs. <laughs> exactly. You're not going to give up an afternoon. To Absolutely. Go and to them. <laughs> like, oh, would you like to come see my junior high choir? Nope. That's a great. That's a great image. <laughs> and, and you know, I mean, it's hard for me sometimes I, with my own kids. Right. I'm learning. Here's the worst. I I remember a seventh grade band. I'm learning the clarinet. It's like. There is no torture worse than than someone who is learning the clarinet. I mean, it's a don't get me wrong; it's a beautiful <laughs> instrument when played correctly. Uh, I, I love the clarinet, and it's and it's you know, uh, Benny Goodman. Uh, I was going to say Benny Goodman. Uh, Rhapsody in Blue would not be what it oh, is without it a clarinet. But when a seventh grader is learning the clarinet, there are there are very few forms of of ear torture. That I can think There's of. There's not that much delight in it. Well, and 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 but you get what I'm saying. For yes. your kid, though, you'd listen to that, and and you would you would do what's necessary. But yeah, you, there's something about loving watching them. Like, so here we're at Christmas, right? And you you know, I, I came in today, and and the the help staff here was was wrapping. Uh, you know, some of you, your house made again. Was... I just for clarification, <laughs> I have no staff in my home. What? Uh, Brian has made allusions in the past in this bistro that I am some 
Scrooge McDuck with a staff waiting on me. That's a fair point. Uh, this was your, wa- this was your wife, wife, Lauren. And, and she was wrapping presents, though. And But but you, when they open them on Christmas morning, you're going to del- delight in their joy. In their joy, right. And, and that's the kind of thing we see here. He will delight in you. And then listen to this. This is the same thing I was saying earlier. In his love... He will no longer re- rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. His, he wants us not to be objects of rebuke, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and he doesn't want us to be objects of shame. And that's that's what we have. Now, back to First John. I, I think there's perhaps no better expression of this than what we see here. Do you want to read this verses yeah. uh, one through three? Of, this is First John chapter three now, and I'm going to come back to chapter four in a minute, but. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, uh, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. All who have this hope in Him purify themselves, just as He is pure. Lots going on here, but let me go back to the very beginning of this. What love, and I love the way I love the way this is expressed in the NIV. What love, what great love, the Father has lavished on us. Right, that that's the idea that He's not held anything back. He He, he you know, we are we are children that we are His children, mm-hmm. and, and we've talked about before that that inheritance and everything that yeah. goes along with that. Um, and, and we often, again, it's a it's a personal. It is not, it's a concrete, not an abstract love. It's the kind of love that a father, a good father has for his child. That's that's the way that he loves us. So he's lavished this on us. Um, there's some other things that are interesting here. Notice the future. When we're thinking about Advent, you've talked about this, that it's Advent. You know, we, we talk about the expectation, the waiting of God's people until Messiah came, and now the expectation and waiting of the, the New Testament people of God until he returns. And, and you see that. You see the hope, all who have this hope in them. Uh, when he when he appears is talking about his return, his, his uh, second coming. When he appears, we shall be like him. We're going to be transformed. You see the transformative mm-hmm. power. And all who have this hope purify themselves. Again, it's a love that wants to see us be everything that we could be, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's talking about holiness. It's talking about purity as, as a part of um, an aspect of his love for us, okay? Um, you know, and, and sometimes, and again, part of this is because we, we, we are imperfect human fathers and, we, and, and mothers, and we had imperfect parents, mm-hmm. Um, you know, what motivates us a lot of times is maybe a sense of shame. Sometimes I don't, I don't want to feel ashamed. Um, I, I see people who were under very difficult fathers, for example, who end up being driven people sometimes who, who can never be satisfied with the things that they have and, and, uh, the, the things that they're doing. But, but this is the idea of the, the delight, right? I, I want, I want you to get that sense of it. This is the delight that, that he wants to see us. Um, you meant, you use the, a great word. You want to see your children flourish, right? You want to see them, uh, become all that they can be. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the kind of love I think that we're talking about. Thoughts on that or questions or comments? Yeah. And I think, you know, he's kind of setting the bar of what real flourishing looks like, you know, because yes. I think that's easy for me to say, like, I want my kid to be all that they can be and I can push them. And, <laughs> right. well, you know, I think, right. I, I, you know, I live in a community where sports is like a huge yeah. thing. It's like, well, you got to be all that you can be. And so it's, it's this push onto the earthly things, but it's, it, it you know, Christ is calling us to a different kind of flourishing, exactly. like real, real yeah. flourishing. You want to see your children have healthy relationships, right? You, you want to see them to be able to provide for their families. Um, you, you know, the, the, there's things that you want to see and that I think are, in keeping with God's desire for us, but ultimately God's desire is to have relationship with him and mm-hmm. to be, uh, we talked about this last week when we talked about joy, true joy is found in, in accomplishing God's purpose for us. Right. I think these two concepts of love and joy are very closely linked by the way, but um, I haven't really explored that enough as I should probably as much as I should, but, 
but but I think that's that's what we're talking about. They're healthy. They're healthy ways that this love then can be expressed. Mm-hmm. Um, what I really want to get across, and this is why I think it's so important how we receive God's love for us. It, it makes all the difference in the world, in my opinion. This isn't just like, oh, I know God loves me, but it is really a sense that God wants my best, has my best interest in mind. Um, and, and in fact, I should have looked up this quote. It's one of my favorite quotes, um, it, but it's about the, the first step in discipleship is really understanding that that God wants our best. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so then to submit ourselves to the things that are that, that are you know, at our, at our best. Cause he knows he's the one who created us. Right. And that's the real rub in the world, it, it, you know, cause it, what, cause God's love for us and it's that transformative love that transformation can be uncomfortable and so, may not, may not reflect what yeah. we think it should. Be. So that's what I was getting at when I said our identity has to be mm-hmm. in this lo- love God has for that. We are his children and that he loves us and wants our best instead of what I think is best for me. Yeah. Cause to be honest, I'm pretty lousy when it comes to deciding what's best for me. Um, yeah. You know, if it were up to me, I would eat things that are not good for yeah. me. I would do things that are that are not good for me. I would not maintain healthy relationships, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's the instant gratification uh, as opposed to the lo- lifelong discipleship that that is really you know where we're supposed to be so so god's love for us is not an abstract that's the thing that's the main thing i want to kind of get across and it is shown in a very visceral it's in a it's mm-hmm. the birth it, it, it is god um being born in a in a very earthy um <laughs> relational way. And, and that's the interesting thing. Then that's where I was going to, going to get at. We talked about this last week with, you have Mary and Elizabeth and Zachariah, you, or, uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah, Mary and Joseph, mm-hmm. and these births, <laughs> right? Both of them are unexpected, mm-hmm. but they're physical births because where love is, is first experienced is in family, right? Mm-hmm. In, in, in relationship and community. And we are then children of God, because that's where we experience love, right? Mm-hmm. Is in family, uh, and, and so we are born. And, and, and think about it, Jesus uses that kind of language. No right. one's going to see that the kingdom of God unless they're born from above. I would say, you know, from yeah. above the spirit and the water. Um, you know, you're born into this new community, and you call yourselves brothers and sisters. And so Jesus says, "Who are my mother? Who are my brothers? It's these people. You know, they're my family." Uh, and, and that's that's what I think when God, you know, what great love he's lavished on us, that we're called his children. Uh, we're, we've been made family. We're heirs now, co-heirs with Christ. And, and all of that, it's, it's, it's concrete, visceral care for us when we could not care for ourselves. That's the kind of love, concrete love that God has for us. And that's what I really want to get across today in case you can't tell. Here's where I think it makes a difference. So how we receive love then I think also affects how we give love. And, and I said the other thing is in this season when we think about love as an aspect of the way God demonstrates uh, his love for us is that he sent his son, right? And that we're born again through him. Um, it also has to do with the way that we give love. It can't be abstract. The way that we give mm-hmm. love cannot be abstract. It has to be concrete. Uh, it, 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 and it has to be done in relationship. So when you think about this season, we want to express God's love to others because God's, you know, again, we think about God's love is not a quantity. <laughs> it's not like we can use it up. Right. Right. Uh, it, it is an eternal supply. Uh, and, and just to simply illustrate this, you, you had a child once upon a time and then you had another child. Mm-hmm. I and, still have these children. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but here's why I here's my point. When that second child was born, you didn't go, Oh, sorry, you're gonna now have to your first child, you're gonna have half as much love as you used to have, because I've only got so much love to go around, right? Mm-hmm. You, you find that you have enough love to love both, both. and uh and so it's not a quantity it, it's a weird dynamic. It's not a quantity that gets halved, right? It's just an increase in the amount of, because it's relationship. It's not, it's not quantifiable. And so it's the same, I think, when we start to love other people. 
uh, it's not like, well, how can I love everybody? <laughs> you know, right. I've only got so much love to give, you know, but, but it, it as we love more and more, I think there is more love available to us to share. And, and, and again, it's, it's in relationship. So at this time of year, here's, here's kind of the only thing I'll say. It's, I love this time of year, the way we want to help other people and the way we want to show God's love to other people. But a lot of times we want to kind of do it as, at a distance and we kind of mm-hmm. want to throw our money into stuff that, that people don't see. And, and I want to say that if God's love, you know, God said, I, I really, if I'm going to love them properly, <laughs> I'm kind of making this up, right? Um, if I'm going to love them properly, I've got to take on flesh. And I've got to live in their neighborhood. Because if I don't, I mean, what kind of relationship is that? Right? Right. And, and I think that that teaches us an important lesson that if we're going to love others, we have to do it in a relationship kind of way as well. We have to build relationship. Um so, you know, you love your wife, presumably, and uh, I'm, I'm not casting this. <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> you love your wife. I do. And, yes. And we've, very ta- much. we've talked about this before. I, I, I think this is a good illustration of what I'm talking about. So, um, you, you, you don't just say you love your wife. You express it in concrete ways, mm-hmm. right? There, there are things that you do. Uh, we talk about love languages sometimes, like. I'm guessing you buy gifts for your wife sometimes. Sometimes you buy her flowers, right? Um, you know, it's a way you show you, you, your your care for her. Um, but there are other ways you provide um, financially. You you provide opportunities. You you know you want to make sure she has the care. You protect her. You know th- those kind of things are ways that you you demonstrate your love. But if you're demonstrating your love in ways that she didn't read as you demonstrating your love, then that that's not going to work very long. Right. Right. And that's where the whole love language book comes Uh, in. And, you know, so, you know, if she acts of service, if you never take out the trash and you make her take out the trash, but you go and buy her gifts every week, she's going to be like, I don't need more gifts. Take out the trash. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And we're that way too. Right. Right. Uh, We want someone to, uh, and how do you do it? You got to understand the person. And you got to know what means something to them. And, and so I guess what I'm saying is in this season, we need to build relationship. That's that's what it means to be God's people, uh, sharing his love with other people, is we need to build relationships with people. Uh, so using, again, God's example, do we choose the people who we like? <laughs> right. Right. We choose the people who are powerless, who who, who are unlovely. Because you know what? We were too, and still are sometimes, quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's building relationships with people, not because they deserve our love, right? But simply because they are who they are. And, and it's getting to know them enough that we understand what an expression of love would be received by them. Do you, do you, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I guess I'm making the plea here for for us to truly love one another well, uh, both within the community of believers, which is Galatians 6 calls us to do that. We have to love one another, whether we like it or not. And, and we have to love others as well and do good to others is what, what the, the gospel commands us to do. And, and in order to do that, I think we have to build active relationships, even with people who are different than we are, that have different opinions, they may vote differently than we do. Oh Ooh. my gosh! Mm-hmm. Um, they may, you know, they may understand God differently than than we do. But we're called to love them. And, and again, the same thing I'm talking about. That doesn't mean we accept everything about you know what they believe and and who they are and, and those kind of things. But we love. And I know it sounds strange to say love and acceptance, you know, but but you understand what I'm saying. Yes. It's not like we affirm er- everything about how they are. In the same way God didn't say to us, oh, you dirty little grubby creatures, I'm going to love you just like you are. Uh, he does love us as we are, but then he transforms. He, he, it's a right. transformative kind of love. So, so we again, we, we don't have the kind of love that can transform, but we point toward one who can. 
Um, and, and I think we can become the first concrete part of the family that shows people the kind of love that God has. Um, and I guess that's what I'm what I'm calling for in this season not to not to just love at a distance. There's there's good ways to do that, but I'm really talking about taking the time and energy and and effort that it takes to build relationships and love in that way as well. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You didn't know this was going to end with the season was going to end with a with a call to love people. I but... didn't. I didn't. I didn't know much of where this was going. <laughs> Uh, yes. So no, but I, I think that's great. I think that's, you know, it's, we've talked about this before. It's so easy to get caught up in the season yeah. and thinking about preparing for the things that involve just us, but, right. you know, looking beyond ourselves at this sure. time, um, reflecting it because again, Christ is returning, yep. you know, and, um, preparing for the fa- the family yep. that, that is to come. That as is well. right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, thanks so much. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, see you next year. Yeah, thank you all our listeners. We'll see you uh, next year. 2023. 2023, uh, yeah. sometime in January. Don't forget to put that in your checks Yeah, when you send them, when you <laughs> yeah. send them in. Or no. when you sign up on Patreon <laughs> and you'd like to send us a, a direct message, you can do that. Yeah, um, yeah so if you have enjoyed the, the podcast, you can uh, help us with this, uh, yeah. the podcast. It does cost us some money yeah. to do online video when Brian's in a spot that has video that works. <laughs> That happened a couple weeks ago. Um, But uh, hosting and and all the other things. Uh, If you're enjoying the podcast, we would love your support. You can do that. Go to our website, thebiblebeastro.com. Share it it with others. We're starting to get a little traction. Starting to be some people out there watching and listening. The new year, there's not... I mean, what else are you going to do the new year? So (laughs) Go back. Listen to them that you missed. But then we'll be back in January. Yes. um, And uh, look forward to to being back with you then. All right. Brian, thanks so much. I'll see you. All right. Take care. Signing off. Bye. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.